Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Thomas here at the Institute for Creation Research Discovery Center, and I'm in the Ice Age realm of the Discovery Center, where we think about the Ice Age as an event or a time period in Earth history that actually happened. And there's clues in the Bible that help us to fit the real Ice Age into real biblical history. So to illustrate some of these concepts we've got in the Discovery Center, a uh, woolly rhinoceros, and it's behind me. And uh, yes, some of them did have blonde hair. We know from their frozen remains uh, in permafrost. And then woolly uh, mammoth back there in the background, uh, reminding us that the Ice Age was real. These creatures were really that big, and uh, they were walking around on Earth. And the question, though, that we always pose is, how do you even get an Ice Age? Like, how does that happen? Uh, and the reason we like to ask that question is because the Bible helps us give the answers that no one else has. And uh, you, you have, here's what you need to get an Ice Age. You need to have uh, um, hundreds of feet thick for thousands of miles sheets of ice on top of the northern latitudes, on top of these continents, halfway down North America, uh, more than halfway down uh, parts of Europe. And so how do you get that much ice on land? And it turns out that the Noah's flood described in the Bible gives us exactly the right um, um, circumstances that get an ice age. And so we think the ice age happened because of Noah's flood. I'll just give you two specifics that the flood provided the earth that helped get an ice age. Number one, Genesis 7 says that the fountains of the deep burst forth. So that means we have hot, hot, hot material coming up from beneath the earth's, earth's crust and that's going to heat up the oceans. So a hot ocean means lots of evaporation. And that's what he thinks, evaporation, he loves it. And it gives him lots of rain uh, for, for him to eat grass, but in other places that froze. It froze as ice during the ice age. Uh, but how do you keep that ice from melting during the summers? That's where you have uh, a rapid sequence of volcanoes, big volcanoes, like bigger than happened today. Uh, and all the aerosols from those volcanoes would have blocked the sunlight in summer months, uh, leaving big ice patches. Eventually it faded. Sorry guy, it did fade, just like you. It faded, the ice melted back, and we have today's climate. Talk about climate change, that was major. And it's in the Bible, Ice Age. Uh, we infer that it happened after the flood, and because of the flood. And because of this um, connection, uh, we can actually just look at Genesis and take it at face value and read it straightforwardly as a record of that which actually happened. And then we look at the words of Jesus who referred to, say, Adam, uh, uh, or yeah, Mark 10, 6, he that made them in the beginning, made them male and female. Talking about Adam, Jesus referred to Noah as in the days of Noah, so shall it, come, so shall, so shall it be. And then these other New Testament authors, they're referring to Genesis events as though they actually happened the way Genesis records them. So we can have confidence that the whole Bible is correct and trustworthy. And that's kind of where our study of the Ice Age leads us to here at the Institute. Um, if you like this kind of content, then click like if there's a like button to click or click share if there's a share button to click. If you really like this content and you think we need more of it and you wanna support the work that we do, we invite you to do that. We are a donor dependent um, organization here in Dallas. And uh, leave your comments below so we can interact with you. And uh, thanks for thinking about the ice age with us in the context of Genesis history at the Institute for Creation Research.